The story begins with our protagonist Saho, he's texting someone about meeting up at a gaming cafe, he bumps into a guy, who cursed at him, Saho quickly apologize. The protagonist was already in a bad mood and this guy made it worse. He wishes for a place where there were no humans, suddenly a loud boom was heard, everyone stop and stares into the direction of the sound. They say it could have been an earthquake, at that moment lighting struck, and a huge blast destroyed the street and building. The civilians ran away, a barrage of lightning hits immediately. The protagonist wonders what's is happening, as he is about to be hit by a bus but his body has teleported. When he wakes up he's in a new world, and sees flying creatures that look like griffins. He hears sounds coming from a forest, and sees a bear, being hunted by a pack of wolves. A doctor says so you woke up in an area with two moons, a bear and a pack of wolves who were attacking each other, how did you survive? The bear die and the wolves are eating, our protagonist watches from behind a rock, he spots a wolf cub behind him. He ran away, a status window appear in front of his eyes, he trips over a rock and falls down a cliff. He lands in tall plants that breaks his fall. He wonders if he really heard a voice or if he just imagined things. He sees fruits that look like apples, he's starving so he eats it, after a while sounds are heard from the tall grass, a eye is seen watching the protagonist from the tall grass. The protagonist is frozen in fear and the giant serpent attacks him, at that moment a giant frog attacks it. He thinks that this place is strange, he falls unconscious. 67 days later he's seen in a tree, the wolf pack is in the area searching for him, although it's not just the wolves the entire forest is dangerous so, he can't let his guard down. A year later he is seen picking bananas that is twice his size. As he eats he spots a wolf cub in the ground. Whenever he doesn't see the cub, he gets lonely since it's been a year without seeing any humans. He feels something wet in his back, he looks up and sees a rampaging gorilla. It charges at him, the protagonist grabs a bean and swing out of the way as the gorilla hits a branch causing it to break, it falls, the impact sends the cub flying, it growls at the gorilla. The gorilla tells out a huge roar, raise it fist and slumps it in the ground that sends the cub flying again. The protagonist then attacks it from behind and stabs it in the eye. It grabs the protagonist and flings him into a tree, the gorilla charges. The doctor asks why did you do that, the protagonist replied I couldn't keep avoiding a turf war, wherever you go there's always someone in charge. Suddenly a white wolf bites it and then the pack joins, the protagonist loses consciousness and thinks this is how I die but when he wakes up, he was fine since they thought he saved the cub, the cub was the leader of the pack heir. They accepted him into the pack, the time spent with the cub was good. The turf war for his pack continued. 120 years has passed and he realized that he's the only human in that world. In this struggle for survival he's made many furry friends and lost some as well. The protagonist thinks I've given up in counting centuries but how am I still alive? The doctor says is that how you became king of the wolves after 500 years but how did you return? The protagonist responds the battle for Moon Hill had began between the gorillas and the wolves. As me and a gorilla were about to clash, a white flash before my eyes and I was teleported at that time three high officials were in the area saying that the dimensional reading is off the charts, the portal beings to open, the three officials run away since they don't know what will come out, an explosion comes from the portal. Two of the officials scream one of them say I don't want to die, the blonde official which will be called Blondie says run I buy you some time the two officials scream into the device we need reinforcement. She faces the portal and thinks show yourself whatever you are I'll slice you into pieces. A human figure appears from the portal, she surprised the protagonist yell a great roar and her body tremble gas she is frozen in place the protagonist then faints. The force felt by the proto was greater than any monster from a high class dungeon. The doctor tells our protagonist that his testimony will be shared with the returnee control unit and he'll be discharged in a few days. The protagonist says Baldi Doc it's been a 1000 years since I've interact with humans, thanks for hearing my story. The doctor leaves and says to himself that the protus should be a novelist with his lively description. At the returnee control unit, Blondie says there must be a mistake, her boss says what mistake, he's AF rank, a rare F rank who could have gotten government pension if he had been AE rank poor guy. She says how could an F rank pass through the portal, the boss says he must have gotten lucky. The boss shows her the proto files and it says he has PTSD. Back to the proto, two weeks have passed since he returned to earth, while spending a 1000 years in the dungeon he had longed to return but he's not sure what to do now, his thought is interrupted by a nurse who brought his meal. Blondie enters the room and stares at how strange he eats, the proto sniffs her a tell her she smells familiar. She told him she was the first person he saw when he came to earth. He was a beast the first time they meet, she wonders if she had lost her touch. 
The proto orders her to tell him what the returnee control department is, she asks how can a young man be so demanding? He responds I'm over a 1000 years old. She thinks he's crazy. She gives him a document to sign and explain all he needed to know. He takes a pen and scribble a wolf, this makes her upset and she asks if he took art lessons, he responds I always knew how to do this. She asks if he learned magic or martial arts. The proto doesn't know any of these he only knows how to survive, she thinks he comes from a peaceful dimension since you need to kill monsters to steal their energy and become powerful. She says he got lucky in those 10 years, the proto become upset, she shows him files of the year he went missing 2015 and 2025 returned. She leaves and tells him to visit his family when he's discharged, the proto says good lord they're still alive. The proto rushes to the doctor's office and says he wants to be discharged immediately, the doctor is not convinced he's ready, the proto says he a threatening way he's not there for his permission. The doctor discharged him, if he promised to tell him his whole story. The doctor gets the proto a cab, when he leaves the nurse asks why he was so kind, he responds I want to hear his story, she says you want more of that nonsense. The doctor tells her to get someone to fix the door. It's the second time he's meet an irregular. The proto is at his brother house and sees a old lady, he tells her he's here for Junho. She says no one lives here by that name and close the window. She talks loudly about loon sharks. The proto takes up a letter that state his brother is in debt. He decides to clear his brother debts and goes to a place to take a hunter's exam, the lady in the office says he cannot take the exam, the proto says I'm an F rank and I came from a portal. She says mockingly an F rank can't pass through a portal they would be shredded. She says he should rack up some points and come back when he's awakened. The proto's confused by this system. He goes to a monster hunting site then deny him entry when suddenly a vehicle breaks the barrier and a monster is seen inside attacking a human, the car crashed and the squad surrounded and shoots the monster, the proto takes this opportunity to enter the area. And when night came he searched the area for monsters, he finds a wolf surrounded, he attacks the creatures from behind killing one with a single punch then a system error appears.